Summer is around the corner. You're you got only a few months left before you're going to be walking. Oh my around. God! You're going to be taking your shirt off. That's right. Going to be <laughs> walking around some pools. Don't be looking sloppy. Let's tighten that up. We got something just for you. It's our summer fitness starter pack. We hooked it up. It's more than fifty percent. I think off. it's almost sixty percent. It off. is. It's almost sixty percent off. Fantastic. Deal. Everything that you need to get you in the best shape of your life. It starts off with our Maps Prime program, and this is so important for you to go through this first and this don't is going, skip through this is this going is to assess your posture to see any of those to point out any of those muscle imbalances an at-home test for you to take and has a compass that directs you to what exercises you should be doing to not only help the imbalances but to also optimize your current program that you're following even if you're not following maps mm. and then it also includes our maps red our maps anabolic our foundational program training three days a week with some of those good barbell movements and the trigger sessions. And then you also get our nutrition and fasting guide, which is huge. And we're all big fans of incorporating fasting for its health benefits. And then a nutrition guide to help guide you guys through what foods you should be targeting. And then all of this comes with access to the forum. The forum probably the most powerful piece to all this because you have access to not only the three of us on there on daily you also get tons of other professionals we're gonna massage you the whole way through other trainers doctors pts therapists you name it lots of brilliant minds on there other competitors all kinds of people that can help you along this process so you can find all of that at mindpumpmedia.com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we open up and have a little debate on technology. Still on that kick, man. Technology. Yeah, yeah, like uh, photographers, they ruined artists. Yeah. Uh, and rap, and rap music. <laughs> yeah, is new rap crap? You know, the mm. mumble rap? The hen- um, hen- 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 let's hen- stick with gangster rap. Yeah, let's. Uh, and we talked about uh, the resistance from the old timers. We talked about technology addiction and overcoming the distraction and becoming more present. And then we get into... The fitness questions. The first question is, can you build more muscle without building strength? If you're one of those weirdos that likes to get more muscle and not be stronger. Hmm, Is that a goal? You might want to listen to that that, that question. Then we talked about uh, all these coaches online who have zero uh, qualifications and have only ever gotten themselves in shape for a show. What do we think about them? Are they great or are they idiots? Adam has some things to say. (laughs) Adam has a lot of things to say on that. Uh, also, how do you handle fit shaming? This is when people kind of make fun of you because you know you eat healthy and you work out and you're fit, so you must be boring and obsessive. Stupid six pack idiot. Uh, lastly, we talk about how to build muscle if you're in a situation where you do a lot of running. We talk about this gentleman who's in the Marine Corps, Marine Corps and runs about 20 to 25 miles a week. How is he going to build more muscle? We talk about all of that in this upcoming episode of Mind Pump. Do you want to know what still blows me away to this day? Styrofoam cup with what? a string that attaches, and then you can talk to each other? No. Oh. This is what blows me I find that fascinating. Till this day. Does that work? Till this day. Yeah, I st- it does work. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. But till this day, this still baffles me. It's old science, but it still baffles me. Hmm. How does my fucking voice go into a phone, go into space, come down, and come out, and it sounds like me? Yeah, it is um, fascinating. That's fucking weird. Science. A lot of st- ah! a lot of styrofoam cups and strings. Yeah. Oh shit. Yep. Pretty much how it works. Isn't that? I mean, isn't vibrations this- and waves and yeah. Yeah. I, I I think, you, you'll sound like ridiculous if you try and explain it. I think the same thing about. I like, bet you it's not that complicated. Television to me is just mind blowing. Could you no, imagine? Television's easy. Could you, Doug? Do you remember what it was like when television first came yeah. around and you guys were? <laughs> Doug's you, that like, that the, old. Ma- the magic box. <laughs> do you remember? Hey, Doug. Do you remember the in- magic? Box. Do you remember the Industrial Revolution when that first kicked <laughs> off? What was it like to see a steamboat? <laughs> what? I just could pretty you- excited. <laughs> I mean, could you... Hey, uh, Doug, hey Doug, what was a dinosaur yeah. like? <laughs> Tell me I mean, all about how this. many of your relatives did you have to eat to get to California? Oh, no, <laughs> just, just imagine being a kid growing up in that era where... You, you you were listening. The radio was already entertaining and fascinating. You know, there were kids that kid, kids back then used to sit around the radio, right? And you just listen to the radio, and that was like you listen to these shows. Imagine when the television came out, and you now could be entertained visually 
by the not only sounds but now you had these these things to look at like how that had been just so fascinating to be watching humans yeah. on a television how did it get the nickname boob tube that's what I want to uh, that's a good question yeah maybe the first porn was there no, no. I, I think <laughs> boob is re- referencing idiot, like idiot yeah, yeah. So, so when tv boob. When you're t- a boob when tv first Start came out that. it was like there were so many people opposed to it because it's oh it's gonna dumb everybody down and make everybody stupid. And, and when phones did. first came out and yeah. were invented, they were like, you know, why would I want a phone? I just walk over and talk to people. Yeah. What's wrong with talking to people in person? Yeah. It's making us less, you know. Uh, you gotta write letters. You gotta go for, walk to my neighbor. You gotta yeah. forget how to use cursive if Tell you don't do stuff. that. Yeah. Yeah. And people used to trip out and get pissed off. Did you know? Trip off this when photography became an art. Artists who painted were like, you're not an artist. Yeah. You're not painting. You're just taking pictures of things. That's not yeah, art. That's too easy. It's like everybody, anytime something new happens, the, the older generation always thinks it's dumb. Do you find that you- Every time. Do you find Except that- millennials, they Do you are think dumb. that you're a I'm culprit of that yourself, or do you think you're- I always check it. Always check it. Every time I look at like a new thing and I want to think to myself like, ah, this younger generation, I go, wait a minute. Is it just because I'm just yeah. used to a particular way of life? Do you think yeah. so? Absolutely. I'm stuck in my own. I'm going to call you both out. Own then. Way. I think I, I at least I try to check. I'm going to call you both out. Then call me out because mm. you guys are both this way with new rap music. New rap music. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, oh my god, it's, it's up, horrible, up. dude. Oh. Well, it's, well, it's still an art. Well, hold and on it's a second. Still a skill. Hold on a second. And it's still take in there. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hmm. This is why I'm right. Oh, okay. okay. This is why I'm right. Yeah, let's yeah, hear yeah, this. Let's, let's hear this logic here. How many? Re, like straight up rap albums or songs are on the top 10 of the billboards now. I don't know that. Zero. Yeah. They used to well, be. They rebranded it. They hip-hop. used to be uh, all the time. I don't know. but Because rap the- used to dominate music and now it doesn't. You know what it sounds like now? It, the, the rap that's popular now is not rap. It's freaking house music. With mm. rapping in well, it. Well, okay, yeah. all now now that's and then it's, you've mum, got the, it's mumbling. And then you've got the mumble rappers who are like hin and 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 hin it's very similar, and if you're truly, and it's let me, true too, because if, if it's so easy, why don't I do it and become a millionaire? Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And the logic, I'm going to start doing it. The Fuck logic it. that you're trying to explain Let's with the billboards it was it actually it talked it 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 about it in the book Hitmakers. So if you read the book Hitmakers, you would actually understand that more than what you're trying to explain it as. Yeah. So there's more to it that makes a no, song. No, but a there's hit. also in like, fact, ooh, what, what, immediate reaction, you know, to something is like, ooh, I don't like that. That's what stupid. makes like there's something there. What makes a song a <laughs> yeah. hit? Uh, actually, there's a lot more that goes to it than actually how talented the artist well, is. Well, that's the problem too. It's it's a double edged sword because it became a formula. Well, and that's why it, it's been and that way for a very it's, yeah. it's been that way for a very long time. There's been a yeah. formula to, to hit the mass. So that that uh, the billboards is not a good example of yeah, what. Yeah, you're right. No, I'm just, no, 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 it isn't. I was just trying to say that that my opinion. Is well, that's why I've always liked billboards. more of the underground music it, forever. I've always liked the underground music way you're, more. You're such a rebel. I am. But I'm my like, my point of, of challenging you on that was just simply because I know that you both are just despise new rap music like that as I did too about five there may be one out there I like you know I'm just waiting for it there's quite a few and I tell you what I caught myself I want the under I I gotta get exposed to the underground stuff I caught myself uh, well, then you like J. Cole is a great example of All someone right. like that. So if you know, I caught myself saying the same thing you guys were saying because I was a huge Tupac uh, fan in that in that Biggie era. I think then that era of rap music, I feel like was the best and was so awesome. And and I felt like we went through this transition of shitty rappers that came afterwards and all it's just, this. It's mumble rap. Synth- synthesizer bullshit. I don't know. There's just more so, meaning behind it well, back then. Well, okay. Well, that, and that's not true. None of that's true. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> actually a lot of it's true. There's actually some. Raise your hand if it's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> Raise like, your hand. Looks yeah. like we're sure. right. Well, you're outnumbered still three to two. <laughs> yeah. So uh, here, Miles. You, my, we got Miles in here. Miles, uh, I think Miles, Miles is a young kid. Miles, yeah. Miles is a young kid. Miles, you, you're familiar with Tupac, Biggie. You're familiar with like Little Yachty and freaking Wayne. Who's better? Just What's like greater? immediate reaction. What? Like, which don't, would you prefer? Don't even compare. Yeah. What? What? You'll get fired if you're wrong. What is? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's it? What's on your playlist right now? 
Okay, so what? Like, what's a, what's a rapper you just listened to yesterday? Uh, yesterday, uh, ASAP Rocky. Okay, ASAP. ASAP Rocky, ASAP Ferg. Okay, ASAP Ferg. Yeah. There's a lot of ASAPs. Yeah. Are you a Wale, J Cole? Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, see. Okay, so. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Yeah. Yeah. Hit him. Does something for you. Yeah. You know what, though? So when it comes to music, that's all opinion. I'm, yeah. That's not, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not saying that it's ruining society. Mm. You know, I'm talking about like new technologies and stuff that people will say are ruining. Like here, here's a good example. But it's popular. Well, right. no, a, lot, a, a lot of people think that, mm. believe it or not, when, rap, popular, music, right. when mm. rap music came out, a lot of people thought it was ruining music. And it, a lot of people. How do you which, ruin music? Well, the same. I don't know. How do you ruin art? Like, yeah. if, if photography, it's, it's how does a time art, period? Art, oh no, no, I, it, no, I understand that. But uh, this is more. That's the analogy is, I'm giving based yeah, yeah, off of what true. you were saying. That's what it's, I think it's yeah. a, a fair analogy. Yeah, that, that is fair. Actually, you know what I'm really more referring to is like when you'll hear, like the older generation talk about millennials, and they'll say something like how entitled they are and how lazy they are and this and that. And meanwhile. Uh, the greatest They're generation. They're killing it, you know, yeah. like monetary wise and, off of all these like channels that we don't understand. And and, me, and also, meanwhile, the the this generation that's so great, this older generation, started two world wars, put us into bankruptcy, and did a bunch of crazy shit. So yeah. I. So it's almost like, what are you talking about, dude? I just yeah. bought a book. <laughs> we didn't start a world war. I just bought a book called Irresistible. It's the rise of addictive. It's got a picture of me on it. The mm. the rise of addictive technology and the business of keeping us hooked. I'm really excited to read it. My client turned me on to it. Um, is it is it on Amazon? Uh, I didn't buy it on Amazon, but it probably is on Amazon. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure it's on Amazon. We Amazon. should put it in the show notes yeah. if we can. Yeah. No. Uh, well, I, she told me it was great. I haven't started reading it yet. I'm still finishing up um, Hit Makers right now, so mm-hmm. I'm almost I'm almost done with that, and then I'll transition into. Well, I'm also uh, reading Straight to Hell right now too, which is fucking fantastic. Mm. But uh, this, she said it was just awesome and we have been recently this has been a hot topic on our show so i was like oh this is perfect read right now because we just had this discussion with who was it we were just having this discussion with what guests did we talk about technology and is it is it for better or for worse we had a q a question somebody mm-hmm. asked yeah. about it mm-hmm. then we were discussing it with one of our guests i don't remember trent, what guest it was josh trent maybe oh maybe it was josh yes yeah. it was josh it was yeah. josh trent we were discussing it with then we had it on q a and then i think we had another one that we talked about it so it's been a hot topic for us and i think it's a, a really good debate mm-hmm. i think sal made some extremely extremely good points the other day but i'm really fascinated to read this book because she said already in the first couple chapters that she was reading, they talked about, did you know that um, Steve Jobs, when creating the iPhone and tablet and all those things, right? Or the, all the iPhone shit, do you know that his kids weren't allowed to have one? Mm. I, I didn't know that. Interesting, yeah. I, I did not know. know I didn't know that. Well, my, my, I, I kids aren't, that- my kids aren't allowed to listen to Mind Pump, so. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, no way. It's a little bit different, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> Mind pump, iPhones, pretty, yeah, yeah, it's pretty similar. Same thing. But yeah. I, I, I didn't know that, and I think that's really fascinating. Something that you know you create, and you create it because you think it's going to evolve us better, mm. and then you don't, you don't allow your kids to utilize the tool. There's got to be a reason, and I think that's the point the book is making is. It's more because he understands the addictive properties that come with it. Yeah, and he he see he foreseen had foreseen the uh, the pitfalls that came with that. That hey, it's a great tool, but maybe you're not old enough yet to use a tool like right. this because of its addictive properties and how much goes into engineering it to get you addictive to it. Oh, of course, oh, and it, so that, but a, you gotta yeah, also. They, there's an app structurally engineer all that stuff is there's an yeah. app that I just downloaded yesterday I haven't fired it up yet it's called uh well just just having a new email and then popping up like how many like you can't if you put your phone down like the I remember like uh this was all when I was researching like games and how they make them more uh, addictive and like just that that hit of how many emails I have or like missed calls or this or that. Like it is so like compelling. Like you can't stop thinking about it until you pick it up and then you, you check the, check it and mm-hmm. see who it was. And mm-hmm. Like we've never had that before we had the iPhone. Uh-oh. I think, I think it, there's a lot of unintended consequences and side effects 
of all this new technology that we're just going to have to we're just going to have to learn to manage because we've never been presented with these things ever. There's so, an, there's an app called Moment App and it tells you how addicted you are to your your iPhone. Sort of it, like a so track it, I don't all need the so usage and like yes yeah. yes so every wow. time you pick it up and swipe or turn your turn it on or use it it tracks the total amount of time in the day that you are being consumed by it and so I just downloaded it I haven't started tracking yet I already know I'm gonna <laughs> fail miserably at it yeah. I'm more scared of how bad I am you know so that's gonna be pretty and you know in our defense. Our fucking entire business revolves around. That's always my argument. You know, it's right. like, oh, dude, now I have everything right here. Like, I never even open my laptop anymore. I And I so. and I feel like, you know, I don't know how how you you justify that or how uh, how you handle that because, you know, it's not like I am was like back in the days when I was training clients, 10 clients in a day. Well, yeah, my, my phone actually sat in my desk all day long because I was interacting with people and training them one on one where now, you know, I'm virtually coaching or talking to people or I'm having to do posts and respond to people on there or we're listening to podcasts or we're emailing or answering something on the forum. Yes. Or, everything is, con- is connecting us in there. Your next it's, post dude, or- it's, it's so, it's so addicting. It's so fuck. And you know what the problem is? It's really easy to make. A, like to make excuses or reasons yeah. why, right? Like, oh, it's my work, or uh, here's yeah. one for me that as a parent, I guarantee you, all the parents listening can understand. I'll go somewhere and I'll be like, should I leave my phone in the car? I really should disconnect. I'm like, no, 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 I have kids just in case an emergency, I better have my phone on me. Mm. And I end up looking at it, you know, when I'm doing shit. You know, it's interesting. I found like with the Focus Brain FM, if I'm like working either on my phone or on the computer, how much more like how I can block out a lot of the distractions mm. that way. It's really interesting because like I, I'll do that sometimes when I'm, because I know if I'm on my phone, I want to keep it business related because almost within, it would be interesting to see like how quickly it happens, but like within a couple of seconds, sometimes you just, Oh, and then you check in Facebook. It's, just, check it, this. Like, it's like, Holy shit. It's like this crazy, like, like drug response. Dude, it wasn't that long ago where we went somewhere and that was it. We were there, and when we got back home, we checked the fucking, you know, you checked your your answering machine to see if anybody called for you. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Before that, it was like somebody just writing it down for you. It just wasn't that long ago. Oh, shit, I didn't get a hold of that. Yeah, where you were a kid, you got on your bike, you're like, Mom, I'm going to go ride my bike to wherever. Yeah. And she's like, okay, come back at, you know, five. Okay, I'll be back, and you're gone. Yeah. And doing whatever the fuck. weren't, then, yeah. And you're just hanging. Yeah, and then you come... You come back at five, and nobody came looking for you unless you were hella late, and then people will come looking for you. Well, and it's I, just that's just it's weird. It is to think about it how weird it is. I really, you know, fuck. I really do need to unplug. Talking about this is yeah. really making me, yeah, realize like how much like anxiety. Yeah, like how I like how much this device is fucking with me because I'm always well. I tell you, we're, we're too accessible. Well, I you tell know, you what, it's hard to create boundaries anymore. I, you know, I, I pride myself on being a, a very self-aware person and something that I, I know for sure that I've, I've caught myself in the last five, five years or so more than ever. Um, I have a really hard time being present now more than I've ever mm-hmm. had in my life. I, it is, it is, uh, it's crazy mm-hmm. to me to think that, you know, I can have this beautiful woman sitting next to me who's wanting to have this conversation and I. I can't disconnect myself from everywhere else. And Dude, I, I got busted for that this morning. I never have, the, <laughs> I never had that issue before. That was never an issue. I didn't have a problem with that. And like, I have to like, it's, it's a trip to me on how much I have to like mentally prepare to have a fucking conversation with my girl every day. Because what there's, and I know there's a combination of things happening because one, we, we, when we see the same you know person every single day, you tend to take them for granted, right? Because they're mm-hmm. there every day. I know she'll be there when I get home. I know we'll be able to talk sure. about things. Sure. So there's a part of me that has the, that it just without even thinking about it uh, subconsciously, just kind of eh, it's I'm not there's a, not a priority there. And then of course everybody has work, everybody has stress. So then there's a, a, a natural distraction there. And then you add the fact in that we have now built a, a, a business that is a hundred percent online and virtually. And there's always 
a platform that is demanding my attention. Yeah. There is never, there's you never could, a- like always do something yes, all day is, long. Exactly. There is there's never no, like, like, okay, in this time frame, in this period, you know, I'll, I'll answer and address your questions right. or, you know, you can, you can find me over here at this time or it's like all day, 24, 24 hours. Yeah. And I think, I think for me, and I've started doing this already, like, so literally, uh, you know, I, I actually, and, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but it, it's part of me transitioning out of this because I know that I need to find ways to to put uh, or find systems or ways to get more connected and present. And if that means I got to pay somebody else, which is what I do now, like I don't check my emails. I don't because I just can't keep up with them and it's fucking super distracting for me as it is. And so that's been something that I've, contracted out it's like i need you to go through and anything that is like you know you need to flag something and you send it now resend it to me flagged so i know that this is something i gotta address today or you it needs my attention otherwise you know filter through this bullshit and prioritize what needs to be addressed or not otherwise you can go down the rabbit hole of reading all this bullshit and emails and trying to respond to every but single it, person. You know what's funny too? It's not even, it's that, but it's also, if you actually calculated the amount of time that you spent, you got to be honest now, totally mm. honest. And we're all businessmen. We're all have an online business. But if you actually calculated the time you were on there, you were on there where you weren't really being productive for work. Yes, I know. It's a lot of time, dude. You know, and that's where the, the well, frustration lies. Like, because... Like I said, like you get distracted while you're you're trying to be productive even. And uh like there's there's gotta be a way and, and I'm trying to figure this out too. So this is like this is this is one of those things with technology where um now all of a sudden you have all this access to all these things at once and, and you're trying to accommodate as many people as you can and um, you know, it's like figure out how to balance that with family time and, and also like just friends and like real life conversations Dude, you, it's it's tough so it's like you know like navigating your way through that is a big challenge but yeah I, I find the biggest frustration is that i'm literally trying to be productive and it's so hard because there's just there's like your mind just just goes into all these different directions and i can't just channel it like i could if it's physical and i'm like writing it with my like pen and paper like that's pen and paper, and that's mm-hmm. all I'm focused on. You ever watch your see how distracted your kids are with that shit? Yeah, you know they'll get on there, and I'll make them shut it off, and we get oh we're gonna go outside, and they'll complain about it. Yeah, and then ten minutes into it, of course we're having yeah a they, great time. It reminds me of the pro the like the the issues and problems that we encountered as societies when food became so cheap and easily produced, where all of a sudden we had to like monitor our food intake because we were becoming obese Mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of this like we're gonna this is gonna have to be something that we're gonna have to learn how to manage yeah you know what i mean it's not gonna happen naturally we solved one problem but we created a ton of other you know pending issues that that don't seem that big a deal Mm -hmm. but will compile over time well this is why we see this rise on these companies like float station and all these meditation things and these all these you have to structure the next big business uh, hunter i i tell you what right now if you're like a you know guy who invests in stock pay attention to companies that are that are moving in this direction i think uh whether it be courses classes uh tools uh that have that help us put into practice this is why i'm like this is also why i love brain fm i mean i think this is an awesome tool that helps people in this direction of becoming more present and that the meditation uh section of this it's only like a 10 to 15 minute either guided or unguided meditation session that you can do through brain fm but i tell you what man it fucking helps man it really really helps calm my mind down and get me get the clutter out man because there's always so much going on and getting all this inf- information overload on mm-hmm. all the different platforms and shit that mm-hmm. I need to do that I have such a hard time being present so you know I've even done this before where I get home I know Katrina will be home in the next hour and I'm like uh all this stuff going on I'm like you know what I can't control that my relationship with her I know is suffering because I'm putting I'm you know putting so much emphasis on the business and other things and she's such a priority to me 
that I have to do certain exercises like this where I'll be like, you know what? She's going to be home in 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to throw the brain FM on meditation, totally calm my mind, shut down all my shit. I'm not going to be diving into any more work. I'm done for the day, no matter what. And this is how I'm going to transition from that, you know, Mm -hmm. workflow to it's now time to be present with my girl. And I tell you what, man, it's 10 minutes. And it makes a huge, huge difference for me, man. That's it, It's been a major it one. It does. I mean, my advice is just disconnect from everything, shut everything off, except for uh, Mind Pump TV on YouTube. We've got some great videos <laughs> that we post every single day. Yeah. yeah. Bring the bird. That bring will a, help. Bring the bird on. is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. All right, our first question is from Carter's Consumptions. Can you build muscle without building strength? <clears throat> that's a, you know what? That's a really, what? it sounds it's like. Called it's called synthol. It's No, it sounds like <laughs> a stupid question, but it's really not. It's really not. Uh, and I have an example that comes to mind right away. Yeah. Uh, Bodybuilders. Yep. You you, you can. Mm. You can. De- I have done, I've done it. I've actually. Well, you're talking just about how big it looks. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you're built. You, it's not really building, uh, I sure, guess. You, yes, yeah, you are. Sure, yeah, yeah fluid well, wise. Well, think about it this way. Like, you could become. You can become stronger without building muscle, right? By by right. by making by really central nervous system. Yeah, like, uh, yeah really getting yeah, yeah. effective Adapting. and efficient CNS activation. Which is so uh, the opposite must also be true too. Right? Absolutely. This is why this is a great question because I think only like six people below this question was an, uh, and so we're kind of doubling this question up. Was a female who asked, "Can I build strength without building muscle?" Because mm-hmm. she wants to be stronger, but she doesn't want to get a bunch of extra right. muscle on her. So. Yes, I, I do. I do believe it's true. The, the guy who doesn't want to get stronger, but wants to build build bigger looking muscle. I don't understand that. Is <laughs> no, does, I know I don't get it. <laughs> does either. it resonate with me? Oh, it it totally uh, re- it totally resonates. Can you make with my me. car look faster? It, I don't it, want it to be faster. Oh, it it totally resonates with me. I I now why would you want to be like a bubble? Why would you want to be bigger without being stronger though? Well, here's here's why. Because when it, when you train to be strong. The, there is a lot of potential risk that comes with that too. Oh, okay, sure, I could see that. And to I, 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 so just so you don't have to move heavy weight. Yes, with more risk. I'll, I'll tell yeah, you. I'll tell you right now. I I dealt with more issues when I started training low repetitions and heavy strength training than I ever did. Now I got stronger, and a byproduct of that later on was I built more muscle and stuff. But when I was just training for aesthetics, to look good on stage and to look awesome when I took my shirt off, uh, I, I was all in the hypertrophy phase all the time. High reps, high reps, high reps. And I was not a really strong guy. And I used to say this, like, I never once in my life took my clothes off and a girl said, how much do you squat or how much do you bench press? So that was my way of explaining that to the person who thought that was so crazy and, and abnormal is, listen, dude. I, 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 <laughs> your I, girlfriend doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your girlfriend doesn't care how much I bench yeah. press. Why the fuck should I yeah. care? So, and 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 when you when you build, if you're trying to pile drive. You need some strength. When oh you God. build, yeah, when you means. build hypertrophy strength like that, or when you when you build these you know bubbly looking muscles, like the term they like to use, right? Or like what bodybuilders look like, or what I look like when I get on stage. You na- you get stronger too. Like you're not gonna be you're not weak. Like I was never I wasn't weak with these. But you're not gonna be weak in big muscles. Like you're gonna be a lot stronger than the average guy. But you can look a lot stronger than what you really are because you put so much emphasis on hypertrophy training, and you don't put a lot of st- uh, f- uh, focus on strength training. Now this is this is kind of cool now because let's break it down even further. Can you cause muscle fibers to grow without them getting stronger? Uh, that's a better question because you can actually make your muscles look bigger without growing the muscle fibers themselves. A bigger mm. muscle fiber contracts harder than a smaller muscle fiber if all other things are equal. So if you have two muscles, 
uh, let's say, you know, both identical, except one has bigger muscle fibers than the other, and everything else is equal in terms of the energy usage and efficiency and central nervous system adaptation, the bigger fiber is going to be stronger, always. Uh, all those things being equal. However, you can make your muscles bigger in size without increasing muscle fiber size, and a lot of this has to do with the, what they, what's called sarcoplasm within muscles. And this represents all of the non-muscle fiber structures within muscle and all the fluid and stuff within muscle. And this actually makes up a majority of your muscle, that, the size at least. So when you flex your bicep and you're looking at your bicep, you're looking at a lot of its size coming from sarcoplasm more so than actual mm-hmm. muscle fibers, which is why I could take someone, dehydrate the hell out of them, and their muscle fibers are the same size, but they've lost lots of size because they've probably lost that sarcoplasm. So you can definitely do those things. What's more common that I see, because this is kind of uncommon, I've never in my life had someone specifically tell me, even people like you, Adam, who train, I they, don't, they don't necessarily aim for this. You yeah, know I wouldn't be, I, I'm not, I wasn't anti-strength. Yeah, that either, yeah no, I, I, I wasn't like. I don't know anybody that's like, oh, fuck, I gained 15 pounds of muscle, <laughs> but I got way too strong. Like, most people don't, Shreds, don't, new campaign. don't aim for this. I see the opposite, though, more. I've, I've had lots of people, athletes uh, in particular, especially athletes in weight classes. And women. And women, uh, definitely, who say, hey, look, I, I, I want to I get strong. I want to be strong, but I want to look like a big muscle. Yeah, but I don't want to get big. And that really comes, most of that comes from CNS uh, activation and efficiency, like really getting the central nervous system Which to fire forcefully and yeah, efficiently. Most, most of it you see them doing like a lot of high reps is right? being professed where it's like, <laughs> you know, like, why don't you try like one to three reps? You yeah. know, why don't you give that a shot and like see how much strength you're going to get from that if you're not trying to build, you know, size and volume. Or do some Olymp- like like explosive type lifts, like, like yeah, Olympic lifts. The best examples I can think of of strength without size is an Olympic lifter. Not, And I'm not saying that Olympic lifters aren't muscular because they are. But if you look at the amount of weight that they can move yeah. in relationship to their strength, holy sh- – you'll find 150-pound Chinese weightlifters squatting. I'm not talking about a, a snatch or anything. Just regular squats with 500 pounds. I don't yeah. know very many 150-pound anybody that can even squat, you know, three or 400 pounds, let alone a, a weightlifter. Well, and so, they're not huge. So efficient at that recruitment process, like like so quick. Yep. And they can they can charge up this then amp way up, mm-hmm. you know, with their central. And, and here's the other thing, like if you really did build lots of muscle without strength, you've like reduced your performance a lot. All you've done is gotten heavier with less strength, so now you don't move as well. You're not as Yeah, you're not gonna be very comfortable your, yeah, like, in your body at that point. Yeah, I mean you you'd be better off getting really, really strong and being the same way. I mean, imagine if if I had if I had my strength, so I weigh about 188 pounds right now. Let's say I weighed 120 pounds, but I had the same strength. Oh my god, I could do I'd do pull ups like I'd fucking like yeah. nothing. Like I'd I'd be able to do handstands and run around on my fingertips and do all kinds of crazy shit. So, but well, I think there's an ad. That's why there's an aversion like I have like like internally. It's because like you just know like if that's your goal and then, and then the extreme of that is now I'm losing a lot of function. Mm-hmm. You know, as a result, because like my strength isn't really like uh, matching my new body mass. Mm. The other thing, too, is one thing that I noticed for myself and for my clients is when I was able to increase their body's ability to handle more frequent workload, that sometimes they didn't necessarily get stronger, but their body adapted in ways that allowed them to work out more frequently, and oh, yeah. that resulted in more muscle. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, you were squatting twice a week real heavy. Now we're squatting three days a week or we're adding trigger sessions or whatever, focus sessions. So you're not, and, and there's, maybe their strength didn't really go up a whole lot, but the, now that their body's able to handle more frequency and uh, they, they see more muscle Cause, size. Oh yeah, because then they naturally drive their volume yeah, up, right? Exactly. So volume is one of those two because a little bit of strength endurance, uh, I mean, strength endurance will contribute to muscle size as well, too. So, And I guess that is strength, right? So yeah. what I mean by that is... It's a different type. What I mean by that is, let's say your max uh, reps with uh, 300 pounds in the squat is 10. Let's say that that's the most you could do for 10 reps. And now, uh, and when you do five sets of that, by the time you get to the fifth set, you're at uh, six reps because you're fatigued so much. 
Now let's say you train and you got more strength endurance. Let's say that your your max ever for squats still hasn't gone up, so you can still only do 10. But when you do five sets, now in your fifth set, you're still doing 10 so or nine or whatever. You're not stronger in the classical sense. Like you haven't done more reps with that weight, um, you know, max reps, but you're able to do more reps uh, because you have better strength stamina or strength endurance. That will equate to more muscle. Yeah. So uh, I do think that for the most part, building muscle will – We'll see. You'll see some type of a change, and improvement in some type of performance, uh, and you may see some negatives in other types of performance. So, mm-hmm. like um, uh, like long, long endurance, building lots of muscle um, will probably take away from that. Like if I'm a long distance runner and I gain ten pounds of muscle, uh, I'm I, I'm all might get stronger, but I may lose endurance because now I'm running with ten more pounds on my body. So, but very good question though. I thought it was good. I th- you know, it seems silly when you say it at first, but... It, it no, does- I know. It surprisingly has a lot of... Yeah, we had a lot of conversation there. I didn't think... <laughs> it was possible. Initially, yeah, yeah. from the question. Just well, like, stupid like, question. I, well, I had saw the girl had posted like, under, underneath that? it the opposite of it. So I thought, oh, yeah. good, good, there'll be a good discussion because we're yeah, going to no, answer I kind of both it, people. Yeah. So. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to Chimera Coffee com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Our next question is from Jenny Burns. How do you feel about fitness lifestyle prep coaches who don't have any certifications or credentials and not a whole lot of experience? What do you think is the best recipe for a perfect oh, coach? Oh, oh Jen A. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jen A. Yeah. Jen A. Uh, wow. So this, you, you must be just tuning into Mind Pump because I think I, I must have went on like a six-month rant about this when we first started Mind Pump because it was a hot topic. Ah, the olden days. It was a hot topic for me when I was, when I was competing. Um, I was floored by this. Uh, I am I am connected to a lot of pro men's physique and bodybuilders and bikini athletes and their coaches. And without saying any names, lots of them are uh, are big, uh, big names in the industry and have a lot of big name athletes underneath them. And so I thought, well, this is great because when I start competing, I have these people to kind of reach out to and and hear their advice on how I should get ready for a show since I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I mean, I know a lot about nutrition. I know a lot about training, but I don't know shit about competing and I didn't and I know it's a sport. So there's it's unique in itself and I'd never been in that shape before. So I thought I would get some great advice. Well, what I started doing was I started before I even was in prep, I was just proving to myself that I could diet and get into that into stage ready shape, I started going around and, you know, talking to my buddies and their coaches and listening to the advice they gave me. And I'm not the type of person that when I hear really stupid advice, I don't just say like, hey, that's really stupid advice or like point that out to somebody like I'm that's I'm I'm more respectful than that. And I'm in your world. You your bodybuilding coach, you've been one for 10 years and You've you've done all this all these you've had all these accolades in 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 your career. So I don't want to come in and you know who am I to say what you're doing is wrong. I'm just there to receive information. So I'm gathering all this information, and I went from coach to coach to coach, and I start realizing, oh shit, like these guys don't know a lot. <laughs> these guys are these guys are giving out bro science like really bad like and dangerous advice. And, and very yeah. dangerous advice and then you ask and then you ask yourself because i know the next thing that people think right away is like well i mean if they have 
Mr. Olympia and they have these bikini competitors and they have these people yeah, that look. they got to be doing something, yeah, right? Yeah, they're doing something right. They look at, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and let me explain how this is. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an extreme analogy, but it's not that extreme to what, what's going on here. Um, if you take your caloric intake where it currently is right now and you reduce it by 50 to 75% and you increase your movement by like 400% by adding a cardio session to two every single fucking day and a ton of, a ton of training volume, uh, yeah, you're going to lose a fuck ton of body fat for sure. I mean, that's just, that is science. Like it works that way, but that is not ideal. And that is not what you need to do to get in that kind of shape. And in fact, there's a way healthier way to do it. And there's a way smarter way to doing that. And in that way, is extremely dangerous and it works for an even smaller population of people and very few people get come out of it not completely fucking up their metabolism. Well, so we, we have a friend who went through it uh, who, against our wishes who's like, hey, I'm going to do a physique competition. And this is a guy who has got decent genes. He builds muscle pretty well. He's a big dude. I don't want to say his name, but he went and hired uh, this well-known coach in the area who's given some some of the dumbest advice I've ever seen. And we saw his body, like, melt. And I don't mean in a good way, either. Yeah. And he hit the stage. Uh, and one of the reasons why he hit the stage looking terrible was because he wasn't on gear. He didn't take a lot of steroids. And this coach who coaches people typically coaches people who are on a lot of gear. Mm -hmm. So they get away with this, this crazy shitty dieting and, and training that shit. And, and you're natural you're going to go up on stage you're just going to look lose a lot of muscle and be smooth well yeah. somebody's what happened somebody said this really well that you know a lot of these guys uh you know get the and girls get in this great of shape despite what what they're doing i mean it's just because they've got either really good genetics or they're hopped up on a ton of gear and so their diet and, and program design doesn't have to be that on point because they're they're taking so much synthetics and they're pushing the body so hard and restricting so many calories that yeah it's you know you're gonna get lean you're gonna get ripped by by those factors but there's a way to do that in a much healthier way so this was what got me to get into coaching I had no first of all I had no desire to compete then I got into competing because I wanted to show everybody watching me go from fat to fit watch me get into this, uh, get into a sport that I know I don't belong in. And by the way, I mean, I don't belong there is I don't have the right body type for a bodybuilder. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I've said this a bunch of times on the show. I'm built to swim in a pool. I have little waist, long, thin legs, huge, wide back, long monkey arms. These, this is not the best if you want to look symmetrical on stage. My body You're is built like a canoe. Yeah. My body is not just not naturally uh, symmetrical, man in the boat. which is why I wanted to do this because I wanted to prove that even somebody like me and somebody who is not ideal for the sport can get into the sport and can do it. So that was the whole idea and concept of me getting in. Then when I got in there, I saw how terrible all these coaches were. So then I thought, okay, let me start helping some of these athletes and coach them. And I actually built a, a very successful business online coaching off of all the fucking athletes that were getting fucked up from all the other coaches. That's pretty much all I coached. I didn't get a lot of first timers. I got a lot of people who had been coached by other people in the industry and had found out about me and how the, we were the, photocopying plans and yeah. handing them. To oh, the, I, I get blown. Everybody. I get blown away by because I because now I'm doing some online coaching and I'm seeing some of the stuff that they were sent from other coaches. And what they do is they do a lot of meal plans. The meal plans are very standard. Here's your 1,200 calorie meal plan. Here's your whatever. And it's the same fucking thing that they send everybody. So it's yeah. just eat these four meals a day and, th and this measurements. And it's very, very black and white, very unindividualized. And it's just, it can for some people, it can be very dangerous because they're mm -hmm. not asking about food intolerances. They're not asking about anything. There's nothing. There's no longevity involved. I mean, my, my, here's my view on this. First off, people who advertise to be a fitness lifestyle prep coach or fitness health coach who have no experience doing this with other people who've only gotten themselves to look a particular way have no integrity. These are people that have no integrity. It's it would be no, like it would be no different than me advertising myself, you know, as a doctor or 
as a uh, you know an architect or anything because I built you know a shed in my backyard. So here, hire me and I can build things. For there's no integrity on these people's parts. But on the other side of it, it's really up to you as a consumer, right? Okay, because if someone's telling you to eat glass because it's good for you, you should know better than to eat that glass and choke and die. So a lot of this is on the consumer. Education does help. So I think that's a first step. Like, where, what, what kind of education you have, what kind of certifications you have, that at least shows a little bit of in, that, the, that the person has some kind of incentive to learn, right. you know, how to be a coach. Um, you know, so I, I, I'd say start there. Number two, look at their experience. Um, how many people have they worked with? Who have they worked with? Talk to those people. Yeah, talk to the people they worked with. Yeah, definitely. More than anything. Yeah. Do- definitely talk Their to experience. the exactly talk to the people that they've worked with, and talk to people who they worked with a long time ago. Because what you'll find, especially with competitors, is someone may have gotten in shape for a show, but now uh, it's a year later they stop competing because it's really they've done so much it's damage really to the body. T- it's really tough though, even with that. Because, it is hard because a lot of these, a lot of these, even athletes that hi- were hired by these coaches, they actually don't realize th- yeah. that there's this there's a big misconception with competing that it is fucking tough and it takes discipline and hard work and peak week is crazy and. You've got to do tons of cardio and carry the Tupperware, and you've got to do all this stuff, and very few make it. And there is this uh, something about being a martyr mm-hmm. with competing that has become this huge epidemic in the in the competing world, and I, it's perpetuated by these coaches that are are coaching these athletes this way, and then the athletes don't know any better because they think that's the process, and so. And it, and the guys before them or the girls before them that were coached by this guy or girl got in great shape. And if you actually go ask those their clients, they might tell you like, "Oh yeah, he's great. Like he fucking got me shredded. I was shredded. I was the best shape of my life." But hang in there; it's going to be tough. And then it turns more into that, like motivating each other to keep going and press through and beast mode. And you got this, and no days off. And it turns more into that than really like stepping back and going like. Should it be like this? Should I have to like? Do I really need to go to to this? Do I really need to eat tilapia and fish and do cardio every single day for an hour plus my weight training every single day to get in shape like that? It, it, no, nobody's yeah. asking. Is that these, the only formula? Yeah, nobody's yeah. asking these questions, and they should be asked. And I and I and I have a big issue with it, and I have a hard time. I kind of like let it go after a while. I mean, I, I ranted on this show for. a for a good six months there, maybe more, about the the issues that I saw in the competing world, and I don't think it's getting any worse or any better. I think it's getting worse because more people are getting involved, and like the new trend is this: you know, you hire a coach who teaches you how to get uh, ready to compete. You compete. You then now become a coach because you've done a show and you now have lots of people that are asking you how you did what you did. And it's just this this crazy, you know, <laughs> thing that's happening right now where everybody who, who competes in a show now thinks that they're qualified to teach others how to get in shape well, for a it's, show. And it's a know. relatively new thing uh, because of social media. Uh, so here's what I think is going to happen. I think there's going to be some self-regulation going on. I would not be surprised if this is already in the works, uh, if if it doesn't already exist. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an online coaching certification mm-hmm. uh, or if there's one in the works because... Well, we've talked about this. Yeah, we've yeah. talked about doing something like that because this, this is something that's new and growing because it really didn't exist much. Well, let's 10, be honest, there's a ago. demand for it because I know like even in the little gym that I, I train out of in Santa Cruz, like I know a couple people that have done bikini and have done physique and um, like they get hit up all the time just by random people because they're just in awe of that physique and they, they go up to him like, I want to know the process, you know, take me through. And it's like, they just competed, yeah. you know, they don't really like, they just followed the protocol of what the, the coach handed them. And so I don't, I don't really feel like they're, and then they inherently know they're not really equipped to, to teach this person specifics. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, the demand is there. And so I feel like some people just see that and, and they're constantly getting this influx of like emails and, hey, I want you to coach. And so it's like, well, 
you know, so they'll they'll, they'll start coaching them. I, I had one lady who just, like, told me all the supplements her coach told her to take. She was spending like $350 a month on all these supplements, many of which when I looked, because I showed her, I told her, I said, Sh- tell me what you got. And I looked up at the ingredients and I'm, I'm like, this dude just sold you. I mean, that's all he did was sell you supplements. And this bottle of this supplement has got a lot of the same ingredients as this bottle of this supplement. But for whatever reason, he says you need to take two of them. You know, these two things. It was just, there was no rhyme or reason. I, I would venture to say there's a lot more shitty coaches than there are good ones. Oh, there's yeah. way, way more. I, it's probably it's probably way. very difficult to find a good it's one. It's very hard. I, I I would love to, and, you know, put this on the list, bucket, or no, no, bucket list, put this on the list of things for Mind Pump to accomplish and knock out because I, I think that I would love to do some sort of a Mind Pump approved, you know, you know, virtual coach because that is the future of, of – coaching and personal training I do believe is virtual we have the ability now to connect to people we have the tools and resources mm-hmm. to assess them online and to, be, and to connect right away and for them to be able to watch their programming and everything I mean it's it's where we're going it, it is the direction and there is a need for someone to do this and as the consumer okay the average coach costs somewhere between 250 and 500 dollars a month for this coaching you can get uh if you're a competitor maps black is like 130 something bucks okay so you can get maps black you can get forum access though and then our nutrition guide you can get all that for under the price of what it would cost you to have a coach for mm-hmm. a single month and the forum is full of not only the three of us in there coaching and helping people but it's full of other doctors pts chiros nutritionists there's all kinds of brilliant other trainers that are inside there other competitors that are at the professional amateur level that are inside there that have been going through the programming so you really want to help somebody like send them that way and you, they can they can learn about their body through guidance from all of us and others that have gone through that same process Mm -hmm. for a quarter of the price of what they would pay some shitty online coach that's actually going to end up setting them backwards. Yeah, do you did you get did you ever have frustrations where people would hire you, Adam, and they're just like, Well just tell me what to tell me everything I need to eat and that's all I want to do. Just give me a meal plan. Oh, not only that, I have a situation that's happening right now, and I know she listens to the show everyone else every once in a while, so I'm I'm gonna bust her out a little bit. Shout out. Yeah. (laughs) So she hired me. What's her first and last name? No, I won't do that. <laughs> she hired me last year, and and she's a she's a friend. She's a friend of our. She's a friend of Katrina's. And when she hired me, I, I'm very transparent with people. So I will look at your body and I'll tell you like you're not ready to compete. You're just not. You are. You're way more than ten weeks out from finishing in top five of even an amateur show. You've got a lot of building to do. And see, a lot of online coaches won't do this because they want the money. Because yeah, they just want to shred you down. Yeah. So where you're at. and 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 that's how they get approached. And th- so many times I get approached like this. There's a show in November. Me and my friend want to do it. You know, and we heard you're a great coach. Can I can I hire you to coach me to that? And when I look at where they're currently at and assess their nutrition, assess their training. I have a pretty good idea if that's even possible for me to do that in a healthy way. And so what I'll tell them is, you know, you're not ready for that. You need me to coach you and get your diet ready, get your body ready before we head into prep because prep is just catabolic. You're just destroying, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. There is no building up going on in in prep. Prep means you've already built the physique that's ready to get presented on stage. Now we're just peeling away the body fat to present this physique. And in order to do this in a healthy way, you should have a healthy metabolism that's being fed properly, and you should have a good regimen built, and you should have a physique that's already kind of sculpted that's going to do pretty well on stage. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels. So this girl that hired me, when I looked at her and I I, I told her, I said, you know, what, I, what we're going to do is I'm going to start coaching you and we're going to start building your physique, getting your metabolism working well. And during that process, I will let you know when I think we're 10 to 12 weeks out from getting into a, a prep. And she was with me for a good three, four months, maybe longer, actually. I think she was with me like five or six months now that I think about it. And she was really frustrated because she's like, I really want to do this show. I really want to do this show. And I'm like, uh, I can I can do that. I can do that if you want, but you're not ready. You're not ready to do it right, and you're not going to do very well, and you're not going to feel very good going there. Long story short, she went her separate way. 
she just recently, about three months ago, hired a coach to get her ready for a show. And she's been prepping for this show and her and her and Katrina talk on a pretty regular basis. And she's now expressing all her frustrations with Katrina because she's two weeks out from her show right now. Katrina showed me a picture of where she's at. Um, she looks no better than what she did with me when I told her she's not even 10 weeks out for prepping for a show because she's still got a lot to build and sculpt. And she is doing two hours of cardio every single day God. and weight training two hours? seven days a week. And she's eating less than 1,500 calories. Jeez. And she's seeing very little change every single week. And she's got two weeks to go. I bet her hormones are all over oh, the fucking and place. She, I know she's completely... And at this point, she's committed to just see it through. Yeah. Because she told she herself put all the work in, right? and I remember when Katrina, when this, when they first started talking about this about a month or two ago, and uh, Katrina started getting all frustrated, and I'm like, "Honey, relax," you know. She's like, "I just can't believe all that time that you spent with her, and you've taught her all these things, and you said all this, and I know she listens to Mind Pump. How is it not registering for her?" And I said, you, "Some people have to just go through it and yeah. and see it for themselves." I said, you can't, I said, this is, you gotta let them get burnt. This is, I'm used to this. I've seen this my whole career where no matter how much great information I tell somebody, it's frustrating. It it is. And you just, as a coach and as a trainer, like you finally learn that you can't, all I can do is I can provide you the information. I can show you where the water is. I can't force you to drink it. And she is now in this process of finding out that it isn't just that simple of tell me to do this, this and that and how I need to eat mm-hmm. and how hard I need to train and I'll follow through and do it. And then I'll be ready for a show. There's much more going you need on. You to learn there. things as you go. Yeah. yeah and we it just sucks, but it's, you know, it's part of it. Well, and we recently talked about this on, a, on another Q&A where we talked about the body systems and how many of these systems are crucial to your body working efficiently. And if you're not fueling it properly and you've been abusing these other systems, it doesn't run efficiently. And when you ask it to get into competitive shape, mm-hmm. you, oh, my God, are you uh, looking for an uphill battle if your systems aren't all running right? Yeah. Next question is from Darcy Annie 90. She's asking, how do you handle fit shaming from friends and coworkers? It's fit shaming. You know, you know what's uh, irritating about this? What was us in general? This is what really fucking irritates me is that it there are always categories of people where society says it's okay to make fun of them. And yeah. fit people, muscular people in particular, Seems to be like it's all good. Like it would, if I, let me put it this way. If I made a commercial on TV that made fun of fat people, right? Made fun of people who are overweight. Mm -hmm. Wow. Would I be, I would be hammered. I'd probably, my business would go out of business. People would say I'm an asshole, whatever. And now if I made a commercial making fun of a bodybuilder or a fit person as being like obsessed or whatever. Oh wait, it's already been done. That's right. It's all over the place already. It kind of irritates me. It really makes me angry. It's and we do this across the board, right? Uh, it depends on you know. There's certain religions that are okay to make fun of and not others. It, you know, all, all these different. It's, it really irritates the hell on me. But before I get into the fit shaming, I will say this: if your family has a problem with your exercise and diet, family and friends have a problem with your exercise and diet, make sure that it's actually fit shaming that they're doing and they're not actually concerned for your health. Because I've been in many situations where I've actually tried to work with people who were overworking out and under eating and they just thought they were being fit shamed. Like there was this girl that I knew who developed or she got she got divorced and developed horrible self body image issues or just self image issues in general because her husband left and whatever. And she just started starving herself and overworking and she got unhealthily uh, just very unhealthy thin. Like just very very skinny undernourished, overworked, skin looked bad, she had bad energy, and she would come complain to me about how her parents kept telling her that she was too skinny. And she'd come tell me, be like, oh. she's like, God, people just, you know, they're so jealous because I'm just healthy now and I'm exercising and I'm eating and they keep telling me I'm too skinny. And I remember she was having this whole conversation where she was talking to me for like 10 minutes about how people are just so jealous because... Now she's fit and this and that. And and I remember like thinking like, how am I going to put this to her? Like, how am I going to word this <laughs> to her? And I told her, I said, well, look, I said, you know, because she was putting me in that category, right? And I said, listen, I said, I'm in fitness, okay? I'm in the industry. I understand 
what you're talking about. I said, however, I think that some of their concerns may be valid. You do look like you may be undernourished. You may need, you are underweight um, and you're over training because I know what your workout looks like. And she did not like that at oh, all and did not. not want to listen to it. So number one, if you, th- if you think you're being fit shamed because your family and friends are telling you that you look overworked or too thin or your face looks drawn in or you need to eat more food because you're not eating enough and stuff like that. That may not be fit shaming. They may actually be be concerned for you. Now that being said, as I say, that's one yeah, now that, side. Yeah. Now that yeah. being said, there is the real issue of fit shaming where I've been to parties or I've been to events where people are eating pizza and I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a great time, and I just don't want the pizza. I just it just doesn't the the risk the, the you know the bad sides of the pizza don't outweigh the benefits of it. At the moment, I don't think it's a big deal. And so people will ask me, well, why aren't you having any pizza? I've done this at birthday parties, right, for my kids. Yeah. And the, the parents will be I like, get shit for not eating yeah. cake all the time. And the parents will be like, well, so I'll have some pizza. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, no, I'm cool. I'm cool, right? I already had lunch. I'm good. And they're like, oh, man, come on, man. You can have fun sometimes. It's not that big of a deal. Like, just one slice isn't going to hurt your physique. or, And they'll fit shame me. And it's, I, I can totally understand how irritating it could be for somebody because- First of all, I don't want the pizza. It's not that big of a deal. And you're making it sound like, uh, you know, here I am, this total, this guy who doesn't like to enjoy himself, who doesn't enjoy food. I'm super obsessive about my about the way my body looks, which is totally wrong. But in reality, what they're doing is they're making themselves feel a little bit better. You know, it's like it's like when you're working out and you're trying to get stronger and then you work out with that guy who just is twice as strong as you. And he goes home and you're like, well, he's on steroids. Fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when in reality, he may not be. He just may have superior genetics and just can kick your ass. Um, a lot of people, they, you know, they, they, they say that you know, because it makes them feel better about themselves, about their lifestyles, about the fact that they don't pay attention to these things. Um, it also sheds a light on their own, sometimes their own. Oh, they're projecting their insecurities. Yeah, well, they're also they're unhealthy practices you know mm-hmm. i have uh, a family member who has uh kids who've got really bad food allergies mm-hmm. and i will talk you know at family parties and stuff because i have other family members who are i'm not the only one in my family that's really into health and fitness i have an uncle who's a, a chinese herb uh, specialist he's actually a licensed herbalist i have an aunt who's a nutritionist uh, actual certified nutritionist but then she's also very much in the wellness side and so when we have family functions a lot of times I'll be talking with the three of them about all these new things that we've been reading. We have great conversations. And I have this other family member who sometimes will come and talk or listen to us. And I'll be talking about, for example, like the role of the gut on autoimmune issues and how certain processed foods and artificial sweeteners and certain things can affect that. And she will get immediately offended. You know, like, oh, well, you know, it's it's not always that. And, you know, my, my doctors, and I can tell it's because she thinks I'm singling her out as if she's doing something wrong hmm. for her kids. And maybe she isn't doing all the things that she could be doing, and which I totally understand because raising yeah. kids is hard as hell anyway, and you throw food allergies and shit like that on top of it. Very, very difficult. So people just take it kind of personally. Yeah, I mean, get really defensive. Yeah, like I've been to parties where I don't want to drink. And again, I, there's a benefit to sometimes drinking with your buddies and friends. But sometimes for me, it's just not worth the, you know, the negatives. Like I'm here, I'm already having a good time. I don't feel like I want the alcohol or need it. I'm enjoying myself. Maybe I had an edible earlier, so I'm already inebriated anyway, right? Yeah. And people will think I'm like, those makes they'll say stuff to me like I'm I'm, you know, like I'm some kind of like I don't like to party or enjoy myself or you know, I'm so not normal. Yeah. And it used to piss me off and I used to fire back. I actually had a moment a long time ago where one of my cousins kept making fun of me for not drinking a beer and I was totally laughing it off, laughing it off. And as he got drunker, the joking got more, you know, got worse mean. and worse. Yeah. And he started poking fun at me. So finally, as he was smashed and he was making fun of me for not drinking beer. So I walked over and I ripped a shirt out of his pants and I slapped him in the belly and I said, well, that's why I don't want to drink. And I fucking totally destroyed him. Like, hurt his feelings really, really fucking bad. <laughs> you fucking oh, and I felt, I felt really, really bad because... Uh, uh, I, coup de kids don't do this at home. Yeah, yeah. I, I let him get to me, you know what I mean? I felt really, really bad. And so now really what, you know, 
How long? How long ago was that? That was years ago. Was oh, probably okay. like ten years ago. I was gonna say it's probably a long time. ago. The way I, I imagine you maybe that. more, maybe fifteen years ago. The way I I handle it now is I just I just don't let it bother me because I realize that that person is probably projecting their own insecurities. They probably feel bad or guilty for not eating healthy or moving I, or maybe I not doing those things. They feel like they're failing. And you know? I, I, I just I just don't let it bother me. I don't yeah. even think it's a probably. I think it's a it's certain. Definitely it's it a is. certainly. And, and this reminds me of um, of success shaming. And, yeah. Oh, that's, that's another one. And that was something that was common in my family that I struggled with when, because I at a very early age, I, I found success in yeah, business. That weird. And I drove myself really hard to get there. And, you know, it, for me, that was a big deal. And I remember I had a really hard time because I'd come back to my family and I would share stuff. And m- my family would, some of my family members, not all of them, some of my family members would make me feel almost guilty or make me feel bad for working hard and and making money. And it was, and I I struggled with that for a lot, for a long time until I realized that that was their own insecurities because they weren't successful. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to the, the, the fit shaming. And when you learn to look at it like that, that it's a direct reflection of their insecurities, it's really a compliment to what you're doing because you're doing such a fucking great job at it that they see it and they wish they had they wish they could they wish they could because i don't know anybody i don't know anybody who hasn't tried to get in shape at one point in their life especially if you're mid 20s beyond i don't know anybody i don't know anybody who's 25 years old or older that hasn't attempted to get in better shape than they currently are at one point in their life and most people are unsuccessful at it and then they see someone like you who's making sacrifices and not having pizza or cake or, you know, carrying your food around in Tupperware. I mean, I'm de- definitely that. W- I mean, I remember when I first came into Katrina's family and that was six years ago. Oh, I bet they got offended. Oh, they did. And and they and it was nonstop to the point where I told her that, hey, here's the deal. Like if I if you can't defend me or stick up for me with your family, I'm not going to come to the family events. I can't I can't take it anymore. I can't take every time I go if I bring my food because everything they cook and make doesn't fall in line with what I'm currently doing for myself and they get offended because I bring my own food like I can't deal with it. I can't I don't and I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to it, it turns into this back and forth thing because they feel insecure about how they look and where they're at with their current health that they're going to make me feel bad about doing something like that. So I just won't put myself in that situation anymore. So I remember having these discussions with her and the irony of all of it was when I first started that and they were first getting to know me and then they watched and then they watched my whole journey from, you know, fat to fit and then competing and then going pro and all that. They were, that was a, you know, several year process that they saw. And to this day, they've all sat me down many times and said, you have no idea how much watching that was inspiring for me. And he goes, I remember when I used to give you shit for bringing your food around. I've just never seen anybody say they're going to do something like that and then stick all the way through it and then to that level. So there's a part of them that that really deeply wants that. So if they're fit shaming you deep down inside, they want what you have. They want that discipline. They want that. And misery loves company. They'd much rather pull you down then lift you up, and it's unfortunate, but don't take it as like dude, a a bad thing. Is it a compliment, dude? It's it's it, it. We're all can be guilty of it. All of us. I mean, I for me, I use it as a moment to self reflect. When I meet someone or I read about someone who's doing something extraordinary, my instinct is to bring them down a few notches, like. If I see this dude who's successful and got a yacht and he's traveling the world and he's doing, I instinctually want to say like, oh, he's he's uh, he's selling drugs, yeah, yeah, or he's not really happy, yeah, you know, he's miserable because you know whatever, or you know, he's he's trying to find happiness because he's not true. Like I don't know the guy; he could be fucking happy yeah, as hell. He could be stoked. Yeah, he could be totally stoked doing all these things, and maybe I'm saying that because I'm not able to do what he's doing because right. I'm not doing the things right. that he did. Right. And so yeah. it makes me feel better for not doing what they're doing. So it does one of two things for me. A, uh, I self-examine and I say, okay, am I not doing the, the things yeah. that, that that guy's doing to be where he's at? 
And if the answer is yes, then I know that I could if I did. Mm-hmm. And the other answer, the other thing is, if I'm not and I don't want to, I'm okay with not being as good as that person that particular, and that's fine too. Yeah, like they can be awesome at that. Yeah, you know? there's nothing let wrong with be. that. Let, let them be. Let them do their thing and 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 do. If you're gonna make fun of people, my golden rule is to kind of follow South Park, dude. You gotta make fun of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> None of this bullshit singling people out thing. Make yourself feel better. Like just make fun of yourself. Yeah. Make fun of fucking everybody. Stop crying. Absolutely. Yeah. Austin A. Smith is a Marine who runs 20 to 25 miles per week. The question is, how does one run that much and gain muscle? Oh, good question. Um, you can you can build mu- tough, you can build muscle, but you're going to be it's an uphill battle. Very challenged because uh, yes, you are burning a lot of calories, so you could make up for the calories with more food, but that's not really the main issue. That's part of the issue, but it's kind of a fat. That's a black and white, easy remedy, right? Okay, if I'm it's if I'm what burning you're teaching your body, yeah. If I'm burning all these calories, all I got to do is eat those calories, and then voila, I should be able to build muscle. It's not that simple because what's happening when you're running 20 to 25 miles per week, which is probably anywhere between, I mean, you're looking at 40 to five, uh, four to five miles a day, five days a week, is you're sending a signal to your body to be very efficient at running, which means it's going to want endurance and yeah. it's going to want to be light. Which means muscle is not helping the cause. No. So um, it's going to resist building muscle because muscle, uh, it's heavy and it, it costs a lot while you're trying, trying to do these runs. Remember, your, your body is going to try and get good at whatever you're telling it to get good at. And a big muscular body is not the ideal body to run you know, four to five miles every single day. So uh, that all being said... Knowing that that's the case, here's what I would do if I were in this situation. Number one is I would focus on strength training, heavy strength training, and I would not do a lot of it. Because you're doing so much volume of work and you're already doing so much endurance of stuff, for someone who I know who's doing 20 to 25 miles a week of of running, I'd have them bump their calories up, so eat a lot more calories, but then I'd also have them lift weights twice a week. That's about as much as I'd have someone lift. And it would be focused around the big, heavy compound movements. The workouts wouldn't be super long. And the goal would be to try and get stronger on a week-by-week basis. And that, in my opinion, generally would be probably the best approach. Well, this reminds me of, you know, if I, if I look back at my lifting career and if I had to pick the single most impactful thing that I did to help me go from being this you know, 165 pounds, six foot three, you know, wind blow me away type of deal, uh, physique to building some serious size on my body. Uh, the number one thing was stopping playing basketball. I was playing ball every day. I loved basketball. and For I, like an hour or two hours? Oh, yeah, every day. Every day for an hour or two, every day. And, uh, and I was lifting five to seven days a week. And I was eating anything and everything I could get my hands on. All the gainer shakes, all the fucking cheeseburgers and fries, milkshakes, anything I could consume, I was trying to consume. And I just could not, for the life of me. I mean, I could add maybe five to 10 pounds, but then within a couple of weeks of just not focusing on eating enough, it would come right off. And I battled with this for many years until I finally decided that, you know what, I cared more about building the physique than I cared about being in good basketball shape. And it was like an instant 15 pounds, like right away of muscle. And that was just like what Sal was saying was I stopped sending this sing- signal to my body that because to be an agile basketball player, it is not advantageous to be a 250 50 pound ball of muscle running around. They just don't complement each other. And the body knows that. And if you're spending more time running around than it, and which you are, right? Because if you're if you're running 20 to 25 miles, like you said, four or five miles a day, you're running almost more than you're actually spending lifting weights. So the body is going to prioritize where you prioritize. And if you prioritize it in being a good runner, then it's going to do it's going to build a physique that fits what a good runner mm-hmm. looks like. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of tough to do both. And I think the advice that you gave is phenomenal because the other thing that I put together was, you know, I also had the mistake of the next big, you know, transition for me of putting size on was even when I stopped basketball, I still was a seven day a week, 
high intensity weightlifter. And actually, when I cut back to training three to four times a week and slowed down and gave myself rest periods for, you know, two, three minutes long, I never did that before. I never two, three minutes. I would I would go insane sitting down, waiting for the next set that long, you know, as a athlete, as an athlete, it was just like the next thing, the next thing, next thing. I had the endurance to do it. So why wouldn't I be doing it? But I didn't realize how counterproductive that was for a guy who was trying to build muscle. So once I cut my, you need that stark contrast. Yeah, so that's all you're doing is, it, is prioritizing your, you know, endurance portion of like your, yeah. So I don't know if I'd cut as low as two times a week, like Sal said. Although I don't think that would hurt. Um, I would probably train three to four times of strength training in the gym with long rest periods in between, and increase my caloric intake. And that's about all you really can do. Uh, to try and build that muscular physique. Maybe start st- maybe start two days a week and then move it up, you know, to three if it's working. I, I just yeah. I, I I just I immediately say bring everything way back. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah that's ramp, a good ramp it back. That's a good I, point. And I think too, like it's probably easier to focus on building strength as as far as like I mean, is you trying to build size because that's that's damn near impossible mm-hmm. with that kind of uh, endurance training that you're doing in combination. So. You know, if you're if you're just trying to focus a little bit more on central nervous system and getting that stark contrast between the two different adaptations, I feel like, you know, you could do, you know, that sort of protocol two to three times mm-hmm. a week where we're just focused on that intensively. However, your body at a certain point, I mean, recovery, that's a whole nother piece to this to this puzzle. So just, uh, you know, be mindful of that and like how, how you're going to be able to approach that and keep your body and your joints. It healthy. is. And keep I, this in mind, like you're a Marine. They're training you for battle, yeah. and you know, two hundred and twenty pound bodybuilder in in battle is at a disadvantage. Yeah. They really are. Like, hey, you're the, a bigger target to shoot, you're, and you're slower, <laughs> and you need more food, and you're just not. No, you're just you, not built for battle. Like a warrior. Like, what? What's the average size of a seal? Aren't they like they're small? Like one seventy, one sixty, one seventy. Yeah. And they're not super tall and yeah, they're like lean and five eight to five ten and like one seventy. Yeah, in that race. yeah. Or you Small look guys. at like the the Spartan race competitors, they look the like top Mike, guys. They look like Mike's. Like the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, or like those those top Spartan race, you know, uh, c- yeah. competitors. Super strong. Yeah. yeah. Ben Greenfield is Grip an example. Like he's muscular, but he's not big. He's kind of wiry. Right, yeah, wiry. You yeah. know what? I do want to point something out though, because I know there's somebody listening right now that's shaking their head no. Because I remember when I was competing too, there was a handful of guys that actually did this much cardio and they competed on stage. I now I thought it was silly for them to do that, uh, but they did and they could. There is still always never forget a genetic component yeah, that, trump, that trumps all this. Yeah. There is oh, of the course. there is the guy who can go run five to ten miles every morning and still pack on muscle. But he's the same guy too that probably was in high school. It was you know more muscular than everybody else. He's a mesomorph. Yeah, you know? but he could pro- he he would also gain a way more muscle if he stopped. Yeah, right exactly. Now. And and. I guarantee you, all those competitors that you knew that did all that cardio were doing a cardio machine. They weren't running. This guy's running yeah, outside, like sprinting. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. running outside for four to five miles a day. Like I've never done anything that has made me well, lose guys, muscle like guys, actual running. One outside. of the guys that, that comes to mind is actually an ex-military guy. That's why I wanted to point this out really? because I do remember a pro that I competed. Now, with. were they natural or gear? I don't know. I mean, I okay. assume he was probably on gear, but it, you know, point being that genetics are going to play a huge That's role true. if you know there's outliers that are like this. So if you have a, a marine buddy who you're looking at, whether yeah, he's, he's all jacked and he's jacked, like, how and do you do that? Yeah, and yeah. he's running with you, and you have more of a body type like mine, and you're trying to do it. It's just, it's just not likely that it's going to happen for you. It's not me. At the same time, too, you probably are a better runner than he is. You know, then that's just how it works. Like yeah. you're probably more genetically geared towards being a great runner and not having a lot of muscle. Where in he's the other way around. He's just uh, responds to the weights and probably struggles a little more with the running. So mm-hmm. keep exactly. That in mind. 30 days of coaching from Mind Pump. It's available for free at Mind Pump Media. Dot com. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we'll answer in one of these episodes, the place to do it is Instagram. Our page is Mind Pump Media. We also have our own personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Justin. And by the way, if you want to learn uh, in detail new exercise techniques, uh, different movements to correct imbalances, 
movements to improve performance. Go to YouTube, look up Mind Pump TV. We put up a new video every single day. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.